A few months ago, I created the best car ramps ever, or so I thought. In that video, I asked for ideas for improvements on these, and boy, oh boy, did you not let me down. In fact, I had so many suggestions for improvements, I figured you'd like another video so you can see some of them. If by chance you haven't seen the original video, then I highly recommend you watch it first. I'll put a link to that in the description. Now here's some of the most popular suggestions. First up was the side latch. The hook latch held the boards together whenever they were in use and being carried. Many of you suggested that I upgrade this latch and you were definitely right. Shortly after this video, I removed this simple latch and upgraded to a clamping latch. It is a lot more secure and does not fall out easily. I would definitely recommend this upgrade if you plan on building these ramps. Now for number two, I had several people concerned that these ramps might slide easily on a smooth surface. Now the surface I do most of my car work on is older and textured, and it doesn't have any movement when I'm using the ramps. But I definitely could see how this could be a problem if you have a smooth floor. And to help with that issue, I'm going to use a kitchen drawer liner to attach to the bottom of our ramps. And since we still want this side of our ramp to be able to swing out, I'm only going to attach it to the bottom of our large side. And to attach this, you could use some hot glue or possibly some staples. Hopefully that'll help with some of that slippage, so let's go test it out. Oh yeah, much better. But just remember, whenever you're working under your car, nothing is 100% safe. Another highly debated topic was reducing weight. A number of people suggested using hole saws or anything else to make large holes in these boards or just make some of the interior boards hollow. Yes, these ramps do have some weight, but that's because they're heavy duty and can handle some heavy vehicles. I would prefer not to put holes in my ramps because that could reduce its strength and its longevity, but that option is totally up to you. But how about we add something to assist in transport without changing the weight? So how about we take a rigid caster and mount it to the side of our ramp right about there. That way it's easy to roll across the floor. Now the caster doesn't have to be super heavy duty as long as it can support the weight of your ramps. Now you can roll your ramps out to your vehicle and quickly get to work. But if we're going to roll these ramps around, wouldn't it be a little bit easier if we clamped them together? And if we're going to do that, we should probably use the same clamps as we used earlier because these are adjustable. And to give it the most strength, I suggest doing two of these on each side. Now we can move these around easily without worrying about them falling apart. Next up, I had a bunch of you ask if we should add some kind of a paint or protectant to your wood. And that is a great idea. Normally I keep my ramps in a dry garage, but if you can't do that, then here are some other suggestions. If your ramps are going to stay out into weather, then I'd probably suggest building them out of pressure treated lumber. Just look at the end of the boards and make sure the labels say foreground contact. By doing that, it should take a lot longer for them to go bad. Otherwise, I'd consider coating them in some kind of a latex paint. And this should help protect it from water or oil that might drip from your car. I was also given a great suggestion of when you paint your boards on the top side where your tires are going to roll, it might be a good idea to take just a little bit of sand and just do a real light layer to each level and that'll allow your tires to grip it really easily. Now I had a great question of would a mineral oil help with protecting the wood? Now it would probably protect the wood, but I wouldn't recommend it because it would make it a lot more slick to get your tires to drive up on them. And just remember if you buy good quality wood and take care of it, it should last you many years. Now a few of you suggested adding a handle for carrying. And as I mentioned earlier, if we add casters, we can just roll them around. But I do understand that lifting and carrying will sometimes have to happen. So a nice handle is a great suggestion. In fact, I made these out of just some scrap lumber, but you can use whatever you'd like. And I'd probably install the handles on the same side as you had the roller. Since you already have something bulky sticking out, you can go ahead and stick that anywhere you'd like. Just make sure you leave plenty of room for your latches to go in and out. Now if you've decided to add a handle, but you don't want the clamps like I'm using here, that's okay. Just make sure you wrap something around your ramps before you pick them up. Otherwise, when you're trying to use your handle, it can be very difficult to keep them together. Next up, I had a number of people mention that they're a little bit worried about driving over the top of these ramps, not realizing they're already on the top. Now, that is definitely a concern. And I completely understand where you're coming from. So I'd strongly recommend using a spotter whenever you're using car ramps, but I know that's not always the case. And I had a number of people suggest taking some more scrap wood and putting it on the top of the last block. This definitely increases that height and makes it a little bit harder to drive over. And even though this is a great suggestion, I wouldn't put my full trust just in this. Either way, I'd highly recommend whenever you're trying to drive up these ramps or any store-bought ramps is to have somebody there just watching to make sure you can minimize those accidents. I then had a suggestion to make these ramps larger. Some of you wanted it longer, some wanted it taller. In both of these cases, the weight and the cost would go up. But you might be able to fix both of those issues by adding another board to the bottom here. But keep in mind, you'll probably have to redesign all of this so that it fits together nicely. I've used these ramps several times to do maintenance on our vehicles, and I have plenty of room as long as I go under the front of the car. The side of the car might be a little bit tight, so just remember, try to go under the front. Now I just want to say thank you for all of the suggestions you provided in the comments to improve these ramps. You definitely make these projects turn out much better. Now if you have any other suggestions or if I miss something, please put those in the comments. Otherwise, you might like this next video.